Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I'm a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on December 29th, 2022 at approximately 12.03 p.m. PST. Today I'm going to read another excerpt from a, from a book saga, from a saga that I've been working on quite literally since I was in grade 10. Now this is the birth of the wolf pack. It actually takes place after the saga I'm about to read to you. And please forgive my ineptitude in reading. Okay, I can read fine. Reading out loud is another problem. In the back of this book, and in the back of every one of the volumes, of which there will be 12 in total, okay, is the original storyline. Now, I made a couple of adjustments to it from the original from the original writing of it, because in the original writing, I literally had numbers written down. But, aside from that, shall we take a look at what really prompted the, the evolution of the story? Okay, this is Ilderbach, the story. After eons of creating, Ivana became bored with wandering homeless and formless. Thus it was that she decided to create a new planet. For many years, Ivana labored in secret, weaving a world from the endless abyss of space. Many universal years later, Lindell found the place where she was working. When he beheld the, be the beauty that Ivana had wrought out of the blackness of space, he was so impressed by it that he offered his assistance. With this help and guidance, Ivana finished her task much sooner than she had anticipated. Once the basic planet was completed, they began to add color to it. At first, they divided the land with water. Then, beginning with simple plants, they worked their way to the creation of great forests and vast plains. These were made lush and green by the presence of water, which was supplied through many channels carved by Lindell on the, on the surface of the globe. Such was the way that the 13th planet was created in the Danagron Galaxy. For the next several galactic millennium, Ivana and Lindell worked and perfected their sphere. Upon completion, they decided that intelligent life other than themselves should live upon the Earth, upon eh, should live upon air now, as they called their as they called their planet to fully enjoy it. For many years, they labored together, devising the forms they wished to inhabit. Thus, these they called Elfid, meaning Earth or World, because, because the forms were forged from the very soil of Ernau. At last, the time was right to reveal their work. So Yvonne and Lindell called together as many spirits as they could gather, and brought them to their paradise, saying, Those of you that wish to remain here for all eternity may come with us to the place where your bodies sleep. There was a great murmur at this. Then slowly, one by one, they started to come forward, rapidly increasing in numbers. At the head of this congregation were Kintas, Tiel, and Kislak. Ivana and Lindell led the spirits to a hidden valley in the mountains of Kor, where their bodies were revealed. After choosing a name, a spirit entered it through the mouth to give it life. Then, within moments, everyone arose and gathered, gathered in the center of the valley to attend a meeting, because it was well known that the group was too large to live as one. We must divide this group in order to exist in peace, declared Ivana, for there is insufficient room in, in this valley for a flock of such size. Therefore, we need, we need volunteers to lead, to lead some of us into the world beyond the mountains. The message, pa message passed throughout the crowd, and someone requested that Kintash lead one group. Another suggested that, that TL guide a second. Then Kislak boomed, I will command the remnants of this host. Finally, after hours of discussions, the elves, as they called themselves, formed, formed four divisions. Yvonne and Lindell kept their group in the Hidden Valley. Kintas led the led some east to the open plains of Lyra. Tiel went west past the Laru Mountains with others, while Kislak drove the remainder south to the borders of the land. 
For eons the elves multiplied and divided, thus populating Erdan. However, this caused problems, for Kislak had great power and forced his subjects to battle their kin to obtain lands of vast size. So ended the first age of the world. As time elapsed, land, Kislak's lands grew larger and stretched further and further in all directions. As he forced his way north, he used his power to conquer all that he could that stood in his way. Those that he could not enslave, he cruelly put to death. As the population of free elves, for now they and now they called them, for so they now called themselves, diminished. Ivan Lindell searched for a new life form of study, of sturdy build and deadly skill in war, which was inevitable. Many, many years passed while they experimented. Finally, Lindell devised a body that was vigorous and enduring. He created them in the deep caves of Kor, and called them dwarves, meaning the warriors, for this was their purpose. When the dwarves awoke, they were so enthralled by the caves that they Im immediately began to plan ways of carving the vast caverns beneath the mountains. As Lindell began his work, Ivana went west to the Laru Mountains. She labored there until she had created a, a group of very short creatures, which she, which she named the Yabake, meaning the vanished. For as soon as they awakened, they vanished behind rocks and other such things. They disappeared so rapidly that Ivana only managed to catch one, whom she named Parrot, the turtle. By the time these new races had been formed, Kislak had constructed the caverns of Del Mar in which he trapped and crossbred many forms of life, using his extensive knowledge of the black arts to accomplish normally impossible hybrids. The creatures that Kizma captured were forced to either work in the deep mines of Del Mar, or feed or be fed to hideous hybrid creations, to his hideous hybrid creations. Ever since Kizma's disappearance, the Yabake had flourished in the Laru Mountains. The dwarves in their prime had, had dealt great days halls in the mountains of the world and cut, and cut the, grand, the grand fire gems out of the earth. And the elves in all parts of the world had multiplied. Then one night, Kislak, lusting for the fire gems, opened the massive doors of Del Mar and sent his beasts forth to bring them and the gems to him. Out of his pits came thousands of, of various creatures, which bore down upon the free people of the world. Most of the creatures were set upon by Kislak's forces, fled far and wide in fear. However, there were, few, there were a few small bands that did not flee, but withstood the evil hordes. For three hundred years, monsters dominated Earth. In, for, uh, monsters dominated Erna. They searched for elves, dwarves, and Yabake, and either slew them or enslaved them for Kislak's use in, De, in Del Mar. The most important being that was captured for Kislak was Menzak, whom Kislak liked so much that he claimed him as his heir and raised him like a son. In time, Kizak's armies were, were able to wrest the fire gems from the rightful places in the halls of the, of the dwarves of the mountains of Kor. Throughout this period of time, messages were passed from Ivan and Lindell to the remaining free peoples, requesting weaponry and armor to be made for the coming battle. Thus it was that the dwarven smiths and the elven fletchers worked late into the, into the night. Making, making armor and weaponry, while the Yabaki across the land prepared food for the battlefield. Then one spring morning, Kislak lowered the drawbridge, the drawbridge of Del Mar and released his armies, which flowed over the land, killing everything in their path that did not worship Kislak. As the armies poured through the plains of, of Sontes, Tiel's elves burst from the, burst from the Napura forest and tore them asunder. Those that retreated towards the Laro Mountains 
met the sudden onslaught of the Ibaki, led by Terran and Terran the Turtle. The rest were forced to the, into the south. The armies that entered the plains of Lyra, near the, in the Brebendar Mountains, were attacked from the north by dwarves and other forms of life. Those that returned to Kislak were trembling in fear and jabbering of the silver sword of Kor. Some of the armies found their, their way north to the Klikan forest, where they were scattered and slain. Many were the depths of the, ba of the Battle of Ascension, which lasted for 5,000 years, in which time several great warriors and heroes rose and fell. The war was finally ended with the free creatures triumphant, and Ivana and Lindell becoming one, Lindana. Kislak was slain, but his heir Manzak survived in the deepest pits of Del Mar. Thus ended the second age of the world. For many years following the Battle of Dissension, there was distrust amongst the free peoples. Slowly the ancient trust returned, but life never regained the peace of the beginning. For there were many of Menzak's spies roaming the world. Skirmishes and battles often arose during the New Age, during this New Age, and many good creatures disappeared. As time passed, creatures became larger and fiercer. Thus the age of dinosaurs came to be. The, wo the, the world was tormented by wars, until a massive explosion originating from the sky impacted upon the ground, causing the age of dinosaurs and the wars to come to an end, and the age of mammals to begin. Gradually, the battles worsened yet again, and the population of elves became greatly reduced. As a last attempt for help, the Grey Elves, since they lacked the skill and knowledge of their forefathers, used apes as a basis for the construction of a new race, called human. After many failures, they completed their new race. Then, in a tidal wave of fury, Menzak opened the new gates of Del Mar and sent his vast armies forth into battle. The battle raged for nearly 3,000 years but caused major changes in the world. The downfall of the Elvish, Dwarvish, and Ibaki cities and empires, and eventually led to man's rise to power. When the battle ended, the ancient races had been almost completely obliterated. Those that had survived, those that survived, hid in the mountains, in the mountainous Dwarven cities, no matter what their race. Thus the battle was, was henceforth call, called the Battle of Doom. At last, the age of man was upon the world. During this age, man created great machines of war and enormous jungles of stone. For many thousands of years, man had dominion over the world. Then a new thought came upon the long-forgotten races of elves, dwarves, and the Ibaki, and they prepared for yet another battle. And that is the story that prompted the construction of the Elder Bakian Chronicles. Okay, and in every one of these books, you will find that story actually written in the appendix. You know, it is my hope that this will that this will bring as much enjoyment to you as a reader as it brought to me in the pro as it has brought to me in the process of writing it. Now that's the first book. I'm not reading out of this one, but this is a sequel already, as you can see in print. Okay, now with this in mind, okay, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate your ear. And if you're looking to, pur to purchase these, okay, there is a whole list of ways of getting a hold of me, okay, that are listed right below this video. Okay, now as far as payment goes, that's the easy part. Okay. Well, sort of. I do take, if you're in Canada, I take email email transfers. Or if you're not in Canada, I work with, the, with I actually work with PayPal. Okay. Now, the easiest email to get a hold of me is innervoiceenterprises at yahoo.ca. I do hope to hear from you. There will be more of these coming. I've decided that on, on the Thursday I'm going to come out with another excerpt. But, 
until we meet again, do take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.